what do you think the future of transportation will look like? Well, a couple of years ago it looked like this. This is a so-called Transrapid, a maglev train developed and tested in Germany, which can transport passengers at a speed of more than 500 km an hour. Today the train and its test track sit here, abandoned and almost forgotten. And we are going to explore it. But let's start at the beginning. The idea to use magnetic levitation to power a train is actually quite old. A German man named Hermann Kemper got his patent for the electromagnetic levitation of vehicles, like he called it, in 1934. A little over 30 years later, in the end of the 1960s, Germany started researching and developing on a high-speed passenger transport system based on that principle and called it Transrapid. <laughs> the technology that lets the transfer plate levitate works like this. Very easily put, there are two magnets, one on the underside of the track, those are the black lines you can see under the concrete tracks, and one on the train. The bottom of the train kind of grips around the track and the force of the magnets pulls them together, lifting the train upwards so it levitates. If the magnetic field of the track magnets now starts to move, it just pulls the train along with it and can accelerate it to very high speeds of over 500 km an hour or even more. Using this system has quite a few advantages. Because there are no wheels, there is no friction except from the air, which makes it quieter and more efficient at high speeds. It can accelerate and brake very quickly and the track doesn't need to be dead straight so it can avoid obstacles easier. Also because the track controls the train, it is possible to drive the trains remotely and due to the same reason collisions of trains are technically impossible. Talking about safety, a maglev like this can't even derail because it's built around the track. All of this makes it safer than a regular wheel driven train. So, after a few prototypes were built and tested in the 1970s, the responsible organizations decided to plan and build a full-length test track in 1978, with construction starting two years later. This is the track we are exploring today. The construction of phase 1 took until 1983, which was also the year where a train levitated on the track for the very first time. Phase 2 was finished in 1987 and on the second day of operation 
They've set a new world record by traveling at just over 400 kilometers an hour. The track itself is almost 32 kilometers long and consists out of a long straight in the middle in two loops with switches on each end, so the trains can theoretically drive an infinite number of rounds. We are now leaving the northern loop and are driving towards the visitor center further south because, after all, this track also used to be a tourist attraction. But more on that in just a moment. So in the year of 1988 the track finally went into permanent operation. In the same year a newly constructed train was used on the track called Transrapid 07. That is actually the red train that you can see right here in front of the old visitor center. In addition to the small info center at the beginning, this was the main hub for visitors and also became the station for entering the train. Yes, you heard me right, back in the days you could take a ride on the Transopied for about 18 euros. This made the track a tourist attraction with up to a thousand visitors per day. And with that comes a very happy coincidence, because my own father used to visit the track back in 2005 and I recently stumbled over some pictures he took back then. So I am happy to present you a small window into the past with that. Right here you can get a glimpse at the visitor center and the better looking red Transrapid 07. We even got a picture from the inside which is rather unspectacular and empty, but remember that the trains were designed to be eventually driven remotely. This one is the right Transrapid 08 sitting on the tracks. The train was built in 1999 and active during the time of my father's visit. There are even two close-up shots from entering the train via the platform. And there's also a picture from the inside and as you can see there are three seats on each side instead of two on the most regular trains because the Transrapid is built a little bit wider than those. And there is also a picture of the screen while driving, showing the current speed of 404 km an hour. From a technical point of view, the development of the Transopeed was going well and everything worked fine. But there is also a dark chapter in this history, and we have to talk about that as well. On the 22nd of September 2006, just a few minutes before 10 in the morning, a horrible accident happened on the test track. With 31 passengers and 3 train attendants on board, the Transrapid hit a workshop wagon that was still on the tracks at 160 km an hour. 
23 people were killed on that day. From all we know, the cause of that accident was human error. The train directors forgot about the workshop wagon being still on the tracks and missed to electronically block that part of the track like it was supposed to be done. Also, the crew on the workshop wagon couldn't hear the clearance for the trans repeat on the radio because two different radio systems were used. After that tragic accident, test runs on the track were stopped for almost two years until July 2008. A newly developed Transrapid 09 was now running on the tracks, but a part of the damaged Transrapid 08 can still be seen in the yard of the workshop and the visitor center. In fact, as you can see, there are quite a few more artifacts from the past left here. There are workshop and service wagons, snow plows, track materials, old magnets and much more. As mentioned before, after the accident and a nearly two year break, the new Transrapid 09 started running on the track in July 2008. However, tourists were no longer allowed on the train and it was once again only used for research and testing. After many discussions and plans to end the usage of the test track, its last days of operation eventually came in late 2011. But the closing of the test track was not due to the failing of the technology, because in fact the technology itself was actually market ready. So why are there no trans repeats running? Well, finding an answer to that question is not that easy. First of all, in contrast to the advantages I mentioned earlier, there are of course also disadvantages. First of all, it's incompatible to existing railway infrastructure, so we need to build expensive, usually freestanding tracks like you've seen on this test track. It can only be used for high-speed personal transport because transporting goods would be too heavy and low-speed local transport would be highly inefficient. Some say it was just developed at the wrong time. Either it came too late and regular trains have gotten too fast and airplanes too cheap. Or it came too early and we may need to wait a 50 years to or so for it to find its place. After all, there were quite a few plans to build trans repeat tracks in Germany as well as other parts of the world, but most of them were dropped. But does that mean that all the trans repeats are lost? Not really, because in 2004 a trans repeat track opened for public in Shanghai, China. Up to the date of this video, that is the only trans repeat running in regular service. If you look up some pictures online, you will immediately notice that it looks almost exactly like the trains we have seen today. In Shanghai, it connects the city with its airport Shanghai Pudong. The 30 kilometers distance are traveled in only 8 minutes.
So let's return to Germany and the no closed test track. Original plans were to demolish the track in 2012, but up to the making of this video that was never started. There were also ideas to find a new usage for the track, like a research facility for batteries for electric cars, which has been partly realized in the old workshop building. Other plans, for example, included to use the track for Elon Musk's idea of the Hyperloop. But for now the test track remains abandoned and you can only imagine that once one of the most modern technologies was tested here. So only one question remains. What happened to the trains itself? Well, the early trains repeat 06 can be seen in the German Museum in the city of Bonn. You could see number 07 in front of the old visitor center and in its yard stands a part of the number 08 that wasn't destroyed in the accident. But what happened to the last one, number 09? Well, to find that out we needed to drive some kilometers to a small town called Nordrup, where suddenly the last transfer pier appears next to the compound of a butcher's company called Camper. Doesn't that name sound familiar? It is in fact the family's business of Herman Kemper, the inventor of the maglev or electromagnetic levitation of vehicles, how we called it back then. In 2017, the company bought the remaining trans repeat and set it up here, now using it as a place for conferences and exhibitions. So the latest piece of technology returns to the place where it was invented almost a hundred years later. Thanks everyone for watching my video. If you found it interesting, consider subscribing and checking out some other videos on my channel where we explore more fascinating places from the past. See you there!